No, thank you. Okay, Jazakallah khair. Okay, because so, usually it gives a message. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, so uh, uh, sometimes I have it auto recording as soon as I start the Zoom, but looks like uh, this feature is not enabled. So the uh, let me go back uh, for the sake of recording quickly. So as uh, so today we will be talking. Uh, well, today we'll be talking about enlightened thinking. Uh, previously, in the last two lectures, I talked about superficial thinking, I talked about deep thinking, and we said the deep thinking is where you have complete analysis of the subject matter. Uh, for example, scientific thinking is an example of deep thinking where you can analyze the subject or the object, whether it's biology or physics or chemistry or any other material, put it in the lab, look at all possible uh, information related to the topic itself, related to the issue itself. And you make sure that you have complete sensing of the object. So you don't just see one part of it, you see it all. You don't just hear one voice coming or sound. Make sure that you have all the sound coming with all the frequency analysis, if you will, and so on. Uh, and that's, uh, it's a good, it's a valuable type of thought. It's needed. It's very much needed, in fact, in our life, the most mostly most needed type of thinking in our daily life is the deep thinking. We have to fight superficial thinking and try to avoid it because uh, it's very simplistic and you can easily uh, misjudge the, the issue at hand. However, enlightened thinking does not allow you to build a, a thought process which can generate thoughts, if you will. This, you need for that enlightened thinking. So we need to define enlightened thinking. So that's what I was talking up until now. Now, so with the enlightened thinking, here is the same issue that we have been talking about. That's my subject matter. If I simply use the first sense of the object, first sight or first hearing or first smell or first uh, touch, <clears throat> then I am superficial thinker. If I use the first piece of information without digging deep, finding more information about the subject, I'm still superficial. If I dig deep in my information uh, and I look at all possible data available to explain the subject, if I sense the object as much as I can, I thoroughly uh, look up the subject, uh, hear all the possible sounds that's, that are coming from it, even if I can go as deep as uh, looking at the uh, sounds with frequencies beyond my listening capability, let's say things that come at gigahertz, like the one with the uh, which we pick up through our cell phones. I'm deep thinker now if i know i use some i have to investigate and think about something other than the subject so that i can understand what i am talking about so i'm here and of course uh, this subject or this object or this issue I need to investigate it and uh, take it also from here to my brain. And the same thing as maybe another issue could be more than one. Okay, something like this. If I am, uh, let me remove this, I don't need more than one. So I have one and two objects. I start in order to understand this one, and let me call it subject matter. Uh, let me call it one. Let me call this two and this one three. So here is the issue. to completely 
understand and pass a judgment on subject one, I need to investigate and think uh, and use subject two and three so I use I need to have uh, an issue I call it subject two and subject three irrespective of what these are in order to be able to understand this one so let me give an example let me give an example Okay, the example which I usually give is I call it a crime scene. Police people who want to investigate a crime scene. Now the crime scene, and here again, let me see that this is my brain. I need to think. And the crime scene usually has many uh, issues. Uh, one of them is, of course, as we said, the sense. Okay. So I see. And The info, okay. So in the the sense, so you look carefully at the crime scene. For example, let's say the. Uh, the murdered uh, person, let's say it's, it's a person, uh, investigate or also sense. So I'm still sensing here, no information. So you uh, investigate the um, crime scene, see, uh, let's say if the person was uh, shot or stabbed or suffocated, for example, just looking at the thing, look at the blood stains, look at the, uh, any uh, material related to the scene and also what they do in the investigation they they block the crime scene to protect the uh, the site of the murder okay so that's what they do now You look at the information, still we are doing the uh, information related to the topic itself. Identity of the, uh, uh, let's say of the murdered or of the victim, let's call it. We see the identity of the victim. We find, let's say his name, maybe a name, uh, birthday, work, place, and so on. And then try to look at the history 
of the victim and use sometimes uh, last time seen outside the uh, or before crime so you find the investigators collect information so investigators collect and use information all of this related to the subject itself So this is what they do. So, so far, you are trying to understand what exactly happened, how the person got into this place, uh, uh, who is he, where does he work, uh, where is he from, from which town he is, from which country he is. All of this is information that is still related to, to the subject. Now, the purpose of the investigation is at the end of the day is to find out who is the criminal so now the uh, excuse me guys just one second okay so now if the investigator continues to investigate the scene itself and the person who got killed, there is no way in the world he will be able to find what happened and why it happened. And uh, he may not be able to really arrive at any conclusion. Sorry, uh, just one second, please, uh, again. All right, okay. So now the person in order to arrive at this uh, uh, facts here, I would be obliged to investigate some subjects, other subjects. It's a friends. I need to look at the friends of the person uh, under investigation, the crime. Although the friends are not part of the crime, but I have to look at the friends. Uh, I have to look at maybe family members. Maybe I have to look at political affiliations. So, if, so the, that would help me to see if the person was assassinated for political reasons or uh, ideas or opinions. Uh, I have to And so on. So the so the person now starts looking at all possibilities here. And actually, if you ask the investigator, why is he looking at uh, these issues? He says, oh, this will shed light. So will shed light on the problem and our investigation on the issue. It sheds light. It gives me more insight so I can understand what could be 
the cause and that's here a good okay so the person here So what I said here is the uh, friends, uh, family, political affiliations, uh, some work environment, financial, uh, transactions, etc. used to shed light on the actual crime. Okay, so I'm looking at many things in order which we, we they call it, it will shed light and that's where the word enlightened comes from, I need something to shed light on the subject. Uh, and here, the uh, once I start having some information, some investigation, I understand who their friends are, what type of relations he has with them, who are the family members, is he still married, is he divorced, does he have children, uh, uh, does any of his, uh, 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 relatives got murdered in a similar manner, any of his friends, some political affiliations, has he been in, uh, in any problem or issues with the authorities? Has the person been threatened uh, previously? Look at all the messages that uh, uh, were uh, related to this uh, Issue so that all of these are going to shed light on the actual crime in order to understand potential cause. So if I find the cause for the murder and possibly an objective, what is the the criminal was trying to achieve and what caused let's say um, for example let me just give an example from our uh, 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 issues here if the objective is to uh, terminate or to stop the propagation of a certain idea and the person who is murdered is the one main uh, 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 driver of an idea. Let's say uh, I have been talking about a new idea, about a revolution, about a change, etc. Uh, so that could be a cause. Now, why this cause is important? Because I, as a, a person in authority, I want to stop the propagation of this idea of this down, and that's why we have. Uh, uh, people who were uh, uh, subject to crime, whether the crime is a murder or it's a prison or it's a jail. So you can, uh, or maybe if it's, sometimes it's a drug related murder. So you know that the cause is that the person, uh, let's say uh, was involved in a drug deal and the objective is to be able to stop uh, someone who is, disrupting a criminal gang or a drug uh, chain in, in a certain place. So these are, so I'm looking for to understand the potential cause and a possible objective. So here, immediately I want to jump to this uh, issue. This is uh, issue under uh, thought process. And then there is something, a cause, 
or uh, an objective. Now I will rename these things. So the cause The cause could have led to a certain issue. So I need to understand cause. And then also the objective, or in other words, sometimes we call it the effect, cause and effect, and the subject matter itself. In another term, the cause usually precedes the thought. So this is cause and I will put it under this is, uh, precedence. And I don't know if I am allowed in English to use a post. If I can create a new term I call post post events oh it, it accepted it my god no it did not pestilence what's pestilence No. Oh, not P, pop, post events, and not L, D. It's not right, post. Okay, it's like post event. Okay. So the enlightened thought now, enlightened thinking will make use of not only the event itself, but we look at the cause, what had caused the event to take place or what has preceded the, uh, the issue under investigation, anything that, and of course it must have a relation to it, uh, and what comes after or the post of the event or post of this issue under investigation or the objective or the impact or the effect. So all of these. Okay. Now, so this is the issue. Now let me uh, give an example from what uh, the, the event that caused me, that pushed me to move out of this lecture and go open the door. So here is uh, uh, the, somebody knocked at the door. So I need to, so I hear the, the sound, I hear the voice, I hear the knock. So I move from uh, my chair, open the door to see, to, uh, to observe and see the source of the knock. Okay, so, the, uh, so I move and then I find a child. Uh, and the child has just knocked at my door, it's uh, night. And the child is uh, asking for some help. Let's say asking for some money. 
So thinking, uh, digging into my pocket, I find some money and I give the guy. All of this is a thought process which uh, related to the topic here is, here is a person, he needs uh, help uh, and he needs help. I can give the help. Uh, then I uh, proceed, I give the help. Until now, uh, this is superficial thinking. I just super, so I open the door, I find someone, he says, I need help, give him the money and then come back and continue the lecture. Very superficial. A deeper, now I remember the object which I saw, which is the child, I have seen him two days ago and I had lengthy conversation with the, with the, with the little guy and I remember all this information that uh, he comes from a family, his father is, uh, has passed away, is dead, and he lives with his mother, and he has one uh, other brother or sister who are uh, handicapped. And then I uh, remember that I made my uh, analysis, my investigation, I figured out that this is uh, a person who, who needs help. So now I see the same object, I use the previous information, I pass my judgment, so now this is deep thinking. It's not superficial. Okay, now for this to be to be enlightened, now I will come and say, why is this child coming alone at night looking for some help? What's the cause for that? And what's the impact of this little guy? Uh, coming to do this, uh, let's say, asking for help at night, what could be an impact? And what's the impact of the uh, uh, helping or not helping? So if I start thinking this way, then it becomes enlightened. Then I say, ah, this guy would not have been forced to go at night alone to beg for money if there was a system that could have cared for him. Well, why there is not a system? It's still a cause. Now I start investigating. Oh, that system does not exist because this uh, system is based on individualism and capitalism. Uh, if you earn money, then you can live. If you don't earn money, then you go, uh, then you don't. So that's a precedence. What? something has happened in the, before this event, before this person knocking at the door, something must have happened. Now, to cause him to come. Now I could go as far as uh, this person or this kid, his father passed away three years ago and he's, him uh, and his uh, uh, mother are left without support. That is going back maybe two, three years ago. But going back even more before this, uh, oh, there was a, 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 an economic system that leaves someone without uh, financial support if he loses the first uh, level of support. That's going farther before. And you keep going further until you can go no longer. So now, enlightened thinking going before the event happens has many levels also. How far you want to go? Like in the investigation here about the yeah. about the murder. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So uh how far you want to go before uh, friends, friends of friends, uh, current friends, or friends which were two years ago, financial transactions. If I mentioned about financials here, uh, I need to look at the latest transaction which was made by him in a bank or through credit card or through any type of other uh, mean, or going about maybe 10 years ago, or maybe. 20 years ago, there was some transaction that this person has done 
and did not uh, uh, borrowed some money and did not pay it back to the uh, uh, at all. So you need to look back how far you want to go back. The same thing here about the problem, the, the issue which I just it just happened to occur to me a few minutes ago. How far I want to go before to the time when the father of this little kid, kid passed away or to the time when his father, uh, let's say, lost his job before he passed away or to the time when his father got uh, a disease, a sickness, and uh, he had no insurance or no cure or no system to cure him or even before that, for when a system was created where capitalism was implemented and Islam was removed so that poverty became a, a, a fact of the society, or even before that, when uh, this person, this kid and his family and all the people were created by a God at one point of time, and there was a, 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 a purpose for the creation, and that purpose of the creation uh, at some point of time was not uh, 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 intact. So this is the enlightened thinking. It leads to me, I need to shed light on the current issue under investigation by something that happened before, which has relation to it. And something that is going to happen after, like in this case with the little kid, oh, if I don't, uh, help or support, I, at some point of time, I may be questioned uh, about that. I, uh, I may be in trouble. Or if I pay, if I give him, I also could suffer myself and I could have uh, serious consequences. For example, if the person who is looking for help and support, he's looking for help and support for money to collect money or to get support so that he can lead a revolution, for example. Ah, then I would be later on investigated by authorities that I am supporting uh, uh, revolutions or change. And that's that could be risky. Or I could be asked by Allah Azza wa Jal why I help someone who does not need help, or I supported someone who uh, probably was going to do some evil, or I did not support someone who is who really needs the help and Allah Azza wa Jal wants me to help him. So all of this is coming after. Abu Tafa? Yes. Just real quick, I want to ask last week for the deep thinking, uh, we, we took the example of uh, doing ishtihad. Yes. That we, we exert the maximum level of uh, effort to deduce a hukum as compared to the superficial thinking. Yes. So what we say for in case of that, the ishtihad, it can, I mean, it is specific to deep thinking and it does not extend to enlightened thinking? Yes. Uh, ijtihad, if actually, if you start doing enlightened thinking with ijtihad, you may be misled. For example, uh, this is a good time to, to discuss that. Let me show ijtihad must be deep. And I, I insist on must be deep, not uh, uh, enlightened. Why, for example, uh, the uh, let's say today, uh, and I will give an interesting example the example of uh, a voice of woman voice. Okay, some scholars with ijtihad. They use the word, the uh, woman voice is our, which is not proof. Why? Because they use uh, a form of not deep. They would say the, uh, the voice could lead, could lead, that's an impact, could lead to some, let, let's call, use the word corruption or chaos, slash chaos, okay? How do you spell chaos? 
Okay. For US. For US? Okay. Yes. Okay, so this is, uh, and therefore, conclusion, also, conclusion, haram to, for a woman, uh, to speak in public. Where, where, of course, in public, where men and women are there. That's a wrong conclusion. A wrong conclusion, why? Because they looked at what is called the potential impact. Uh, in, uh, in the usul al-fiqh and ijtihad, they call it the ma'alat al-af'al. Ma'alat, if you write in Arabic, ma'alat. The consequences in English, consequences of acts. Now, consequences is what comes after. So the investigation is not on the issue. The issue is the voice. So I need to know, understand this voice, which is coming, a sound coming from the mouth of a woman or a man. What is that sound? What does it mean whether there is an evidence whether it allows it or does not allow it and in what cases that's the issue but when i start looking at the uh, relations here then i will uh, uh, i will make a mistake in ijtihad also today let me use the other what's what happens before so go about let's say the uh, خلافة رول or not the خلافة خليفة elected for lifetime okay so خليفة elected for lifetime which means uh, خليفة does not have a time limit actually elected not for lifetime, this is not correct. Elected for undetermined time. So I'm not going to say he's elected for one year or two or three, he's just elected. Now, if I use before that here, what happened during uh, old Khilafah. I start investigating what happened in the history with the Khilafah, and I start thinking going into, let's say, dictatorship which is one man rule dictatorship. So if I start thinking this way, then I will arrive at the wrong conclusion. That, which is must limit time of ruling time of a khalifa rather than saying the uh, the ruling of a khalifa is determined by the fact that he is implementing islam or not implementing islam by he's doing correct or incorrect by, by the, the, the 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 actual uh, acts of a khalifa which is here should be based on the actual ruling and the practice 
of the Khalifa. So it is, it's limited by the acts, not by the impact or not by the historical implementation, the historic implementation of the, uh, of the Khilafa. That's how the rule should be. based on not this one so this one is invalid and this one is invalid and that's what's so using the enlightened thinking in the wrong place is dangerous and not using the enlightened thinking wherever it's needed is also dangerous so that's very important so here i can come up with a conclusion or uh, uh, I would call it as uh, uh, golden rules. Why I keep doing thinking instead of thinking? Use enlightened thinking in place of deep when deep thinking is required risky and dangerous because you really arrive at wrong conclusions and not using enlightened thinking wherever it's needed is also dangerous. And here, dangerous means does not allow you to arrive at correct conclusion, like the issue of the uh, crime investigation here, crime investigation. Political analysis, by the way, political analysis, if you keep the deep thinking alone without going enlightened, you will rarely arrive at the correct conclusion. For example, uh, if you are talking about, let's say, the uh, American-Iran negotiation and political analysis, uh, and you keep analyzing this nuclear issue, whether the nuclear uh, program of Iran is risky or dangerous, or uh, it makes impact on the world affairs or not, whether Iran is close to making a nuclear bomb, whether it can threaten the state of the Jewish state of Israel or not, or it impacts the presence of American troops in the Gulf, you will never arrive at the correct conclusion. However, if you look at this issue from the perspective, you take uh, the world order, you take the uh, relationship between America and the uh, uh, Iranian revolution back in 1978-79. Uh, if you take that into consideration, if you look at the uh, deep struggle between America and the Britain back in the 1950s and 60s and 70s, uh, in order to replace the old imperialism with the new imperialism of America, then you can understand that all the negotiations today about the uh, uh, about the nuclear uh, affairs between uh, of Iran is nothing but to enable Iran to continue to play the role it plays in the uh, uh, in the area in the region which is the Middle East and uh, uh, East Asia, if you will, or uh, West Asia. Uh, this role that Iran is. Uh, supposed to implement and to play is what is really going behind the, all of these negotiations. Uh, so you can understand the subject matter only if you are enlightened, if you look at other issues which are related to it. So here we say risky, like for example, Ijtihad. In Ijtihad, you have to be deep. Now, would, would the scientific method also be part of this deep thinking? Yes, scientific method is deep. Actually, if you, in, in scientific, if you go enlightened, 
uh, you will go wrong. Because in scientific thinking, you have to understand the reality of the issue itself. It doesn't matter what caused this issue to happen or what impact it may have. Let's say if I am investigating the nanotechnology, uh, the nanotechnology is about the one of the smallest piece of matter that's known until now. Of course, there is a quantum technology, which is the quantum, which is, uh, let me uh, stay away from that now. Let's say if I'm saying the nanotechnology, uh, I understand it based on the fact the, that this is a small piece of, of matter that carries the same properties as the uh, microscopic large piece of matter. But then uh, 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 because it's tiny, very tiny, therefore I can, uh, 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 it takes very strong instruments to measure it. I have to, to be able to, to see and uh, what are the uh, specific properties of the matter once it comes at this nanoscale in terms of frequency, in terms of energy, in terms of uh, providing uh, same impact as the, let's say, uh, let's say if, if the nanotechnology is part of a gold, what type of property does the gold have at the nano level? Okay, that's fine. Now, if uh, once I start thinking about that, if I want to go enlightened and say, well, you know, if I have this nanotechnology level of matter and the ability to manipulate material objects at the nano level, then this may be used to disrupt the normal functioning of, let's say, the heart of a human. Okay. And then I start, while investigating the nanotechnology, I'm trying to see what potential it may have or may not have on some other issues and what danger it may have and how it can endanger species or not endanger species, etc. then I'm no longer doing the scientific thing. Scientific thinking is to focus on the subject matter and define it, define its scope very well and make sure you don't uh, uh, go beyond that. So what they had is deep thinking, scientific is deep thinking, crime investigation is enlightened, political analysis is enlightened, and Aqidah Uh, foundation also is uh, enlightened. And, as, uh, and that I will uh, do a complete full topic on the Aqidah Foundation as uh, an enlightened thinking and you will not be able to arrive at uh, a valid Aqidah, correct Aqidah, if you remain uh, uh, deep. Let's say if you here the so-called evolution. No, that's not what I wanted to say. Just to get evolution for Aqida issues is also dangerous because it is it can only be deep that's one reason why we when we talk about uh, evolution why, why would i dismiss it even even with before going into investigating whether it's valid or invalid idea i say look it's a deep thinking anyway, it's not enlightened, so it's not useful for Aqidah. Uh, similarly, scientific thinking. Scientific thinking does not qualify to arrive at Aqidah because it's deep, and Aqidah requires enlightened, and as I will be talking about uh, next time, inshallah. So this is the essence of enlightened thinking. So the enlightened thinking in, in a conclusion A quick question whilst you're typing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, 
in the previous slide when you mentioned the scientific uh, and also the ijtihad. Yes. So just to be clear on the classification, for instance, say the topic is climate change in science. Yes. Uh, if, say, a scientist is studying air pollution levels, carbon dioxide, all of that, and then he's coming up with a conclusion as to whether there is um, climate issues or not, then he will study that very, very deeply using all the evidence. Would him, would him then looking at the political considerations as a result of his research be classified as him not entering the realm of enlightened thinking? Okay. Uh, and here is an issue. There is a, a, a mix between two. If I am looking at climate change as a climate change, uh, which means I investigate the temperature variations over uh, two or 300 years, uh, I look at the uh, impact of the uh, uh, pollution uh, that comes from factories and to make the, the density of the air uh, uh, lighter or, uh, or heavier and the penetration of uh, uh, heat waves, etc. All of this is deep, this scientific. Now, once I start looking at this uh, uh, controllability of climate change and its impact on some capitalistic corporations, let's say, oh, if I arrive at the conclusion that climate change is very dangerous, is very risky, and it's real, it means that some companies, they need to restructure their factories, change their uh, schemas, so that it will reduce the, uh, the, pot the potential of climate change. That's no longer scientific. That's now I'm going here into the political analysis. So, uh, so immediately it will not allow me to arrive at the conclusion of the, the scientific conclusion because I already have uh, linked this to a potential co uh, uh, impact not necessarily the cause to the potential impact on the on something that's very dear to my heart or to my brain or to my society, which is the the, the profitability of uh, large corporations. That's no longer scientific. So it will it will uh, bias your research, bias your scientific conclusion, and you will no longer arrive at the cor correct conclusion. And that's why. You will find the sometimes the people they investigate the same data, same data coming from the big data banks, and one group arrives at climate change is not significant, uh, and other one says no climate change is absolutely significant and dangerous because of the uh, correlation between what is current and what will come after. So as soon as you go here in the scientific trying to see what is the relation between my current investigation and what will come after, I'm already going into enlightened type of thinking and that's dangerous. So note here, the point is that the, uh, which I was uh, trying to, uh, in fact, which I made a few minutes ago here, yeah. If I use enlightened thinking in place of deep thinking, that's bad despite the fact that ijtihad is one of the highest, highest level of thinking, ijtihad. Why? Because uh, you're really uh, uh, exerting all types of effort to extract rules which are uh, very necessary and important and must be correct to control and conduct the behavior of a human being. So it's very, very, very important, very high level. But and very deep. But if you go enlightened, uh, you will mess up the whole uh, the whole purpose of uh, of which they had. Contrary to that is the aqidah. The aqidah you uh, you may not have to be as deep as ijtihad. and that's why, in fact, if you if you uh, uh, leave the subject aside and go back to the literature on, uh, on Islam, you'll find that the books of Aqidah are very scarce compared to the books of Fiqh, 
and ijtihad and the level of thought uh, and the efforts exerted in the issue of ijtihad are way beyond the efforts exerted in the in the aqidah issues and that's normal that's normal because the depth requires very very large effort because sometimes you'll say oh i found 20 dalils related to the subject but even then you'll say look if there is yet one more dalil one more evidence one more hadith one more ayah one more understanding one more issue that could distort my conclusion please leave away my leave out my conclusion and use the new one because it's so immense and it requires the utmost depth in and in in, uh, in the analysis so that's why it had in in our uh, uh, work in the work of islam at least is way beyond and much more uh, 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 sophisticated and uh, elaborate than the issues related to the aqidah, because aqidah uh, is enlightened. Uh, you may uh, use uh, uh, one or two pieces of information and evidences which can lead you to arrive at a conclusion, and you can make the judgment, a final judgment, and then you will say, irrespective of what type of evidence you may come up with, my conclusion is valid. And that's in fact uh, why this aqidah issue is powerful. Now I say, look, I know that the world is created by a creator because the world has limitation. And that's all and that is sufficient for me to arrive at the conclusion that it must be created. Now you come up with an evidence, you will say, you know what? Someone is saying that the, there are certain regulations and rules that allow the matter to evolve. And here are evidences. I say, look, I may look at what you are saying evidences just to, to refute them, because I know they cannot be right because my, the evidence I used is more than enough and absolutely sufficient to arrive at the conclusion I did arrive at. Whereas in ijtihad, this is not true. In ijtihad, if I provide you with one hadith that you did not take into consideration, you have to revise all your thinking. So that's what the, uh, the issue here. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. One of you. So, just a quick follow up on that question. Uh, it, it, it just had, would it be correct to say, this is just from a previous conversation I had with, with about the discussion, would it be correct to say the outcome of Ijtihad would naturally lead to an enlightened form of thinking in our current times? Yeah, I'll give you an example. example. In the issue of uh, uh, an Ijtihad into the Islamic social system, for example. Uh, in terms of, uh, for example, غض البصر, lowering of the gaze in society. But this is a hukum that there's, there's, that, that, that is, that is uh, well, not necessarily ijtihad on it, but obviously غض البصر is, is, is a ruling in Islam. So the, obviously the outcome of ijtihad are ahkam, and would it, would, would it be correct to therefore say, for in order for me to then implement this hukum into society, that now exits the realm of deep thinking and automatically enters the realm of enlightened thinking, or would that still be a part of deep thinking because Islam demands the implementation of the hukum? If you see yes. what I mean. Uh, Islam demands the implementation of the hukum is still deep thinking because it's uh, it's another hukum. That's another hukum yeah. based on another ijtihad. Now, when you start saying, for example, oh, غض uh, البصر lowering your uh, gaze of your sight is uh, obligatory, is obligatory. Now, if I don't do that, if I don't uh, abide by this rule, then number one, let me be enlightened now. Number one, there will be 
some chaos in the social order. That's an impact of a rule. That's no longer the ijtihad. That is a potential. This is a potential. Now I'm going enlightened. But then you would say even more, if I don't do that, then I know that there will come a time when I have to pay the price for it. I will ask you, oh, what type of price? We say, oh, maybe someone will be uh, uh, looking or citing or impacting my daughter or my wife or my sister. And that will, uh, that will provoke my, my senses and my emotions. It doesn't matter why, whether it's tribal or Islamic or nothing. So you are still going into the enlightened phase. Or even farther, you'll say, actually, if I don't do that, even after I die, I could be responsible for this act. So you are correlating the event with something that will happen after. Now you are already in the aqidah realm. You are no longer in the ijtihad. The ijtihad is done, is done by the time the mujtahid says that it is haram to uh, uh, to stare at uh, a foreign woman or at a foreign man. Foreign means not uh, mahram or not a husband or not a wife. Okay, so the once I start correlating the impact of abiding or not abiding by the rule, then it's you are going into light. So that's that's already the, the the rule of the that's the issue of the aqidah itself. Yes, but okay, ijtihad, okay, yes, okay. yeah, ijtihad ends begins and ends at the by investigating the issue at hand. So here, enlightened thinking is definitely required when the thought cannot be finalized until and unless you consider one, the issue at hand, any issue which preceded any other issue. Uh, or subject which preceded the issue under investigation. and any other issue or subject which uh, occurs after the current issue and has and is related to it. So, any other issue or subject which occurs after the current issue while it is related to it. It has to be, there has to be a relation. We're not talking about everything that happens in the future period or in in, in absolute manner. We are talking about things that uh, happen in the future which are related to it. For example, I, examples of Aqeedah, uh, that's what we were saying, the Aqeedah says now, the idea of the Aqeedah which we say, Allah Azza wa Jal, let me now, I think it's, uh, it's a good time to bring the ayah which I really always love to bring it at this. It says, الَّذِينَ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ 
السماوات والأرض look here thinking about the creation this is the subject subject is earth subject of heavens and earth okay so number one i'm thinking about the subject rabbana when we say rabbana ma khalaqta hadha batila thinking about the cause of the creation and what was before it it's not for uh, a game or for a play there is a purpose and then they say subhanaka faqina adhab an-nar here thinking about what could happen after all are gone now this is all are gone is my uh, wording but this is thinking about what could happen future okay and here past and here actually current okay so this is how the issue of the thinking the thought of aqidah is enlightened and this is how the Sahaba, they, and in fact, this is what Allah Azza wa talks about the Sahaba. Allah is saying that the Sahaba, they were enlightened thinkers in the terms of Aqidah. I'm not only trying to see if the earth and the heavens is limited, it's not eternal, it is, uh, 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 they are uh, limited beings because they need a creator. Uh, but I'm saying that also this was not for no reason. There must be a reason for it, so, some cause. And then there is a consequence. And the consequence could be the hellfire. So Allah Azza wa Jal, please save us from the hell after the hellfire, which would come uh, uh, at the end of ends. So this is the, the essence of enlightened thinking. And we need to, to really master this master enlightened thinking in order to be able to arrive at the valid and correct aqidah and if we stay at the at the at the deep thinking like scientific thinking there is no way in the world there is no way in the world we will arrive at this conclusion i could uh, be as scientific as possible uh, investigate the matter as much as i want but I, there is no way in the world I will arrive at the conclusion, oh, after all this, this uh, 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 matter which is so complex in its uh, design and structure, ah, there must be a creator for it. And this creator uh, uh, probably is going to hold me accountable for how do I deal with this matter. Science will not allow me to arrive at this conclusion. Ijtihad will not allow me to arrive at this conclusion. Logic will not allow me to arrive at this conclusion. Sensing and instincts will not allow me to arrive at this conclusion. The only thing that allows me to arrive at this conclusion is to be able, is to be enlightened in my thought. In other words, I have to look at this, what preceded and what comes after while I'm discussing the issue at hand. Okay. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, just uh, on on uh, slide number 39, uh, okay. there's the one before. So quick thing, you're, you're mentioning that Ishtahad is very detailed and deep. So even if there's one more evidence, so you have to let the opinion go and you have to kind of consider the, uh, that opinion. 
So as compared to that and oh, thinking, wait, but wait, 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 uh, correct. I mean, make a correction to your statement. It's not one more opinion. I said one more evidence. One, one more evidence. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Go so w one more evidence. So it is very exhaustive and very deep uh, when it comes to Ishtihad. But wouldn't it be the same, for instance, if we're doing the political analysis and in order to come with the enlightened, I mean, uh, we have to kind of, I mean, this is this why we say that to keep up with the news and what the events are happening. And if we miss some of the information that that will lead to maybe incorrect political analysis. So it would be as deep enlightened thinking as the deep thinking? Well, true, true. Uh, enlightened also at some point of time, uh, uh, if, you are, if you have not used the correct information, the proper information, uh, and you find out there is an information which is stronger than the one you used, the one you used, not another piece of information, uh, then you have to change. Uh, but if it's, let's say, uh, uh, all the information I used are valid and correct, and they allow me to arrive at a conclusion, then my conclusion will not be changed or altered with yet one more piece of information. Okay, even with, uh, uh, with political analysis. However, however, let's say, if the piece of information I got it turned out to be invalid or incorrect, or it was not the way I got it, or it was a fake news, like these days, let's say uh, someone is uh, giving a piece of information that, uh, let's say uh, uh, Khamenei uh, privately met with Putin, for example, uh, privately, and uh, the American uh, agents or whatever, well, they were not informed previously about the, uh, about the meeting. Now, that piece of information probably uh, can lead me to the conclusion that Iran is contemplating the idea of moving away from the American uh, uh, partnership or uh, relationship. So I come to a conclusion. Now, if later someone brings me, he says, look, the uh, information was not accurate. The information was, let's say, there was a meeting between Khamenei and Putin, and this was part of uh, the agreement that took place between Biden and Putin that Russia is allowed to uh, uh, to have deals and uh, whatever with Iran. So there is some now. Now then I would say, okay, that piece of information which I relied on was incorrect. So there is a difference between the invalidity of information or the sufficiency of information. In political analysis, there are su sufficient and necessary information. If I have the su sufficient and necessary information to arrive at a conclusion, then that conclusion is final. And every other piece of information, even if it's correct, I would have to interpret it based on my uh, earlier conclusion. And that makes my political understanding solid. Okay, so uh, for example, let me give the also example from political analysis. When uh, uh, Saddam Hussein moved into Kuwait and uh, in 1990, and the uh, uh, piece of news that Saddam Hussein met with April Glassby, the uh, American ambassador to Iraq at that time, right? Uh, 48 hours before he invaded uh, Kuwait. Then the conclusion I can uh, take from that is that uh, Saddam is working with the Americans uh, on the uh, Gulf uh, issues and Gulf. Uh, 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 political status. That piece of news contradicts my earlier conclusion that Saddam has been installed by the British and, uh, and of course, the whole Ba'ath Party. And the Ba'ath Party has continued to rule in uh, Iraq with the same trend without any change. That's 
my base, then the new information, I will have to either be able to explain it in the light of my earlier conclusion, or I will dismiss the piece of information or will hold back and say, simply, I cannot explain this. But it will not alter my the conclusion which I arrived at through my enlightened thought. And that's where the delicacy of political okay. analysis. Political analysis has to be based on enlightened thought. Enlightened thought, you may arrive at a conclusion with not all the pieces of information, but sufficient and necessary piece of information to allow you to arrive at the conclusion. Okay? Okay, so this is this is a key difference between political and ishtihad. So you can you can yes. make the right conclusion with the sufficient information. Exactly, sufficient and necessary. See, let's say there are four pieces of evidences. These are sufficient and necessary to allow me to arrive at a conclusion, and that's it. Whereas with ishtihad, you have to be exhaustive. That's why it says in the definition to exert all effort. Badlul wisai, badlul wisai in Arabic means. I'm exerting all my possible effort. I have no means, no effort, no energy to be uh, uh, to continue uh, looking for uh, uh, for the leads. Then I stop. Then I say this is my conclusion, and and then then you will say, look, if there is yet one more evidence which I was not able to consider or did not reach me. Please, please use that evidence and forget about my opinion. In fact, this is how the fuqaha used to say. They like uh, uh, Imam uh, Malik used to say, إذا صح الحديث فهو مذهبي. If the hadith is found to be correct, then that's my madhab, that's my thought. Whereas the aqidah people, you will never see the aqidah scholar who would say that. Who would say, look, if... <laughs> Uh, another evidence is found to contradict my uh, conclusion, then take that and forget my uh, idea. No way. You, you cannot do that with Aqib. Okay. And one, one last thing, is there is there a reason why most of the political analysts and media and everyone, they usually apply deep thinking and not enlightened thinking when it comes to politics or the news and analysis? Well, because uh, this is what is being taught in university, the issue of political journalism. It's not really political analysis per se. It's the, the method of journalism. Journalism is to look at all evidences related to the event itself. So they focus on the event. They try to bring all evidences related to the event, and they do not have the will or the uh, potential or the, even the, the capacity to correlate that to previous uh, issues related to the current event or to uh, uh, potential conclusions or impact later. And that's, that happened to be uh, the case, especially Political analysis has been part of political science. And one, well, once you talk science, you talk deep. Uh, whereas, whereas you when you find the political leaders who are not journalists, who are in position of uh, uh, ruling, uh, and you read their statements, you find in their statements there are lots and lots and lots of untold stories uh, which are purposely hidden behind certain words. So the, the politicians or political leaders, they do practice uh, enlightened political thought, whereas analysts, they use the political science techniques and methods, which are, uh, which are mostly in the, here, in the scientific, uh, uh, part. So they go in the, and that's why they call it actually political science. And if you don't do political science, you don't do the scientific analysis, and you uh, keep on the on the subject, they will dismiss your idea as being a conspiracy theory. 
and they started giving some names uh, like conspiracy theory to deter people from the uh, enlightened political thought. And that's on purpose, of course, because that would lead people to uh, uh, to discover their plans and their missions, etc. Okay, there's a question here by Sister Lubna. Would you shed some light on the difference between types of thinking and levels of thinking? Ah, the, well, uh, the types of thinking, for example, I use the word here, scientific thinking is a type of thinking. Uh, logic is another type but it's a style rational is a type of thinking uh, whereas the levels are the superficial the uh, deep uh, and the uh, enlightened these are the levels and also we use sometimes types the word type of thinking to talk about uh, the scope of thinking, where thinking is applied. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, I will uh, come back to this uh, topic, uh, the types of thinking. In fact, I think I'm planning to talk about that next time. Uh, uh, well, let me do it this way. Types. Oh, or next lecture. Actually, let me. So it will be next lecture, which is going to be uh, not tomorrow, right? That's today is Sunday, Saturday, seventh uh, August. And this will be on the types of thinking and here i will be using the uh, uh, <clears throat> logic i will use scientific and then i will use the rational okay so these are the types which we'll be talking about the difference between rational thinking which is uh, enlightened scientific which is deep logic which is neither deep nor rational uh, nor even superficial but unfortunately it's used as type of thinking so this these are this is the your question will be the subject of next lecture inshallah okay any other question tonight for me? Okay. Okay, thank you, uh, brothers, sisters. Sorry for taking more time tonight, but uh, I had to because I missed yesterday. All right. Okay, Salam alaikum. Jazakum Allah khairan. So I stop sharing. I end this lecture.